With an estimated world population of 80 million, the humble barn swallow is not exactly an endangered species. However, in the last two years, these tiny birds have found themselves at the center of an ever-increasing struggle between their summer roosts and the proposed development of a major new international airport. Mount Moreland here in KwaZulu-Natal, just outside of Durban, is home to one of the most wonderful avian exhibitions imaginable. Something like three to four million barn swallows emigrate from Europe and roost right here in these wetlands. But within a few kilometers of their summer roost is where the proposed La Mercy Airport is to be situated. Why a large international airport is even considered so close to such a large gathering of migratory birds has the experts worried. Well, of course, the first prize would be not to have an airport. It's, an, it's certainly not an ideal situation as far as um, environmentalists are concerned. Um, if we have to have it, then we, we would obviously insist that there was some sort of management plan put in so that to back up, everything was done to make sure that they can live um, alongside with the swallows. Mount Moreland residents Ted and Valerie Vickers are driving a campaign to protect the barn swallows. Their dedication has attracted attention both locally and from around the world. We've been absolutely astounded by how many people have come here. We've had over 8,000 people visit us since November um, last year. Together with the Lake Victoria Conservancy and Tongard Hewlett's, Ted and Hillary have established a viewing site where the general public can share in the wonder of the Barn Swallows daily exhibition. They come out in the evenings, they bring their picnic tables, their sundowners, and they come out and they sit for an hour and a half and watch the swallows. And all those who have witnessed the swirling mass of birds at sunset and sunrise agree that it would be a terrible pity if the barn swallows, once known as the European swallow, were to lose their summer roosts here in Mount Moreland. More so if you consider that the tiny birds, weighing only about 18 grams, make a long and arduous trip every year from their nests in the Northern Hemisphere. The trip involves incredible hardships, including foul weather, predators, and a lack of food. All these birds leave Europe in early September. Even your three-month-old youngsters come and fly all this way. And surprisingly, the youngsters arrive first. So they aren't flying with their adults, but they know to come to Mount Moreland. It's amazing. The Vickers' efforts have not gone unrewarded. Since February this year, a joint project between the Environmental Wildlife Trust and the Airports Company of South Africa, or AXA, have been attempting to find out more about the barn swallows' flying patterns. Will air traffic prove to be dangerous to the swallows? And could the swallows prove dangerous to passengers should there be a bird strike involving an aircraft? I think one of the main things that shows that yes people are considering the swallows is that little white box that you can see behind us over there that's the American ornithologists with their bird tracking um, radar station which AXA have paid two million we believe mm. to have them here so therefore that shows that AXA yes are very concerned about the swallows mm. and this is something that we are very very pleased about. Mm. Ron Merritt is the president of DTEC Incorporated, a company that specializes in, amongst other things, systems for aviation safety, avian survey and monitoring. AXA has hired the company's bird strike avoidance radar system. This bird radar is allowing scientists to collect vital information. Actually, you'll find that the radar will show you so much more than you can ever see, even from a microlight uh, or from the ground with your binoculars. If you think you have a, a, an idea of how these birds are using the landscape, how high they are and how quickly they move, the radar will show you that uh, well, each one's turning 20 times per minute. So we're taking literally millions of, of images or uh, observations of the atmosphere over the course of this study, where when you're looking with your eye, you, know, you just get a glimpse yeah. of it. Albert Fruneman of the Environmental Wildlife Trust is working closely with Ron's team. We are involved in that whole process and advise them on getting the best available technology um, out here to actually assess what these swallows are doing because we don't want to um, see 
something as precious as this being lost. At the centre of the research being conducted is the radar's operator, John Bortle. So John, are you the, the poor guy who sits in here hour after hour monitoring our barn swallows? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, tell me what you the radar tracks on a daily basis exactly what the birds are doing. In the morning, they, they tend, these birds tend to leave the roost all at one time within a 15 to 20 minute period. Um, and when they leave the roost, they go out in all directions. The sight of millions of barn swallows leaving the Mount Morlands wetland in the morning is breathtaking. We're going on 5.50 a.m. right now, and now the birds are starting to leave the roost. And they just keep going in all directions. So this is very, very typical of what happens on a, on a daily basis here. The same repeats in the afternoon when they return from feeding. So when you actually see these birds, it, they, they, they have this dynamic swarming behavior right above the roost site and, and roughly in this area. Um, but as soon as light conditions get low enough, they all drop down. It's absolutely amazing seeing these birds fall out. I mean, it, they fall out of the sky and go straight to roost. Yeah. One of their objectives is to find out how long and exactly when the swallows exhibit this type of swarming behavior. Also we're looking at it, how high are they going and what potential effect um, the glide slope for approaching aircraft could be um, not only the birds on the aircraft but the aircraft on the birds. The fact that AXA is concerned about the barn swallow is an important development in the fight to save the plucky little bird's summer home. Dion Clouty, head of AXA Durban, is aware that every move made by his company will be scrutinized. It's, it's, it's a major issue that needs to be dealt with both in terms of from an environmental perspective but also from a safety perspective. It is precisely because of this safety perspective that AXA began working with the Endangered Wildlife Trust in 1999, when they established the Partnership Bird Strike Avoidance Program. Durban International Airport was the first in Africa and the Southern Hemisphere to use dogs to scare birds off airport runways. We have major programs all across the world trying to get birds off of runways and away from runway areas because the security that's provided by the fences you know, and the lack of predators, birds actually flock to airports. Recently, John was involved in using the radar to monitor the activity of turkey vultures who had taken up roosting on NASA's space shuttle launch pad in Florida, USA. Is that two years ago they hit a turkey vulture on the way up. So With the shuttle? The shuttle hit a turkey vulture and it came, uh, they, they, they estimate anywhere between a meter to a meter and a half of being catastrophic of where this bird impacted the, the, the shuttle itself. The International Bird Strike Committee estimates that bird strikes cost the international aviation industry in excess of $1.2 billion on an annual basis as a result of damages and downtime to aircraft. Since 1912, in excess of 200 people have lost their lives as a result of bird strikes on aircraft. Durban was one of the airports um, one of the worst airports in the world on bird strikes many years ago. And ever since we've implemented this program at Durban International, we've actually come down and we're probably one of the safest airports in South Africa on bird strikes. There are similar programs running at Cape Town International Airport and Oliver R. Tambo International Airport in Gauteng. We needed an appropriate response and over time, and, and this we did in, in, in a partnership with, with the EWT, we were able to up our response. Clearly, birds on airport runways or rocket launch pads for that matter, pose a high risk to both bird and passenger. But can the two share the same skies over Mount Moreland? It's unlikely they're going to have a serious impact at all, and there's just a number of reasons for that. First, they're very small birds, uh, they're, you know, in terms of their body weight. There are lots of them there. But there are lots of them. So you know, it's, it's mass, but it's also how many you, you actually encounter at one time. So when you look at risk management, you're actually looking at not only the mass of the birds, but as you said, how they're distributed, how packed they are, mm. and whether or not they occupy the same time and space an aircraft would. This, uh, at this particular time, I don't see a mass greater than, say, that point there, which is roughly 550 feet. Um, the actual flight path of aircraft that would come over this roost is roughly 720, 750 feet. So a little bit higher, maybe say about right here. 
That's where aircraft would cross. Fruneman is also certain, from the data gathered so far, that a method can be found to allow the barn swallows and the airport to coexist. Again, it is something we would be looking at as an early warning system to perhaps have a radar in place as part of the operational program of the airport to, similar to a weather radar, to warn um, pilots and aircraft that are flying into the airport of if and when the birds are there and then to take um, avoiding measures to, for example, like you would not fly into an airport when there's a heavy rain shower. The idea of coexistence is slowly but surely starting to gain a number of supporters not least of whom is BirdLife South Africa. At BirdLife we try to work with developers as opposed to against them and then we find that the offsets are usually greater in, in, if we work in that manner. As the manager of the conservation division of BirdLife South Africa, Neil Smith is as aware as anyone as to the international importance of the swallow roost in Mount Moreland. So there's international interest in this? Absolutely. Um, BirdLife International and the RSPB were strongly involved with press releases over in Europe. I had uh, close to 800 emails objecting to the project from Europe. Um, I had a few from Italy, some from Netherlands and even from India. But the barn swallow issue is only the tip of the iceberg as far as the Mount Moreland wetland is concerned. I think one of the biggest problems with this whole barn swallow issue here in Mount Moreland in the Lake Victoria Conservancy is yes, we want to look after the barn swallows and they must somehow coexist with the airport. But perhaps the bigger issue is how do we look after the wetland, the ecosystem in this area? After all, it's home to 150 bird species and frogs and whatever else. So can this exist at the same time as having an international airport next door? The decision to build a new airport in La Mercy is not a new one. A plan was put in place for the future as far back as in the 1970s. Is this airport going to happen? The new airport at La Mercy is going to happen. The exponential growth that we have experienced within industry has just necessitated, reached a point, the plan that has always been on the table to relocate at a point that that point, that point in time has now arrived. The whole Mount Moreland region has in the last 30 or so years evolved into a sort of unofficial green zone, despite being just 15 minutes out of Durban city centre. Residents like Hillary and Ted worry that the associated development that will grow up around the airport will suffocate this small patch of paradise. And natural phenomena are quite difficult to get to see these days. Man has done so much destruction. And here you have these tiny, tiny little birds coming in thousands and thousands of them. The data captured by Bortle and Merritt will be included in an environmental impact study being done by AXA. But Hillary and Ted warned that the overall impact of new developments on the local environment are not being taken seriously. We've been to all the scoping reports, all the specialist studies, until it's been a, a hectic um, five, six months, because they're trying to rush this um, EIA through in about nine months, whereas normally an EIA takes two to three years. Dion Clouty says this is not the case. The resources that has been thrown at it, the number of studies, the number of identifying the issues and, 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 and making sure that all of those issues are, are researched and understood and engaged upon, I think it has been a, a very extensive process. It is not concluded as yet. A final date for the completed EIA has been delayed to incorporate the radar findings. And despite the obvious difficulties in combining the interests of both big business and the environment, it does seem that the prime developer AXA is committed. If you don't mind the pun, the barn swallow issue as it affects Mount Moreland is still up in the air. But I think that it's quite reassuring to know that a company the size of AXA is taking this issue so seriously. After all, they've spent something like two million rand on bringing out radar equipment to investigate the behavior of these birds, to see exactly how they might interact with airplanes and airports. And I think the other important issue is that other stakeholders are starting to express concern about looking after the wetland, the roost area, in other words, the greater environmental issue.